Lab Plus is the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at Auckland City Hospital and is responsible for processing thousands of samples and specimens every day. Lab Plus is being transformed by new technologies that are creating faster, more detailed and accurate diagnosis for Auckland's population. As the technologies develop, the work of the medical laboratory scientist is changing. Lab testing has changed hugely in the last 40 odd years uh, from essentially what was bench manual type analysis to full automated platforms going from only a limited number of tests per day to what can be now many thousands of tests. This means that uh, results are more accurate, they are more precise, um, result, turnaround time is a lot quicker and clinicians can act a lot quicker or more appropriately by getting these results. Um, it also means that the scientists do become more specialists in the new areas in which technology is being developed. One area where new technology is having the greatest impact is in the analysis of genetics. Dramatic leaps in our understanding of chromosomes and DNA has led to an explosion of new possibilities in the fight against cancer and inherited diseases. With the advent of this technology, we're now able to make more diagnoses, we have a better hit rate, and of course provide a much better care or a much better um, sort of a management plan for the patients and their families, of course. Lab Plus's molecular genetics area looks at strands of DNA to discover if illnesses have a genetic cause. The human genome, the complete set of genes in a cell, was only decoded, or to use its technical term, sequenced, in 2003. But already next generation sequencing has transformed our ability to treat disease. Um, next generation sequencing allows sequencing of multiple genes at a time and from this we can get a much faster diagnosis. We can look at hundreds of genes at a time so it is a much bigger scale and much more efficient. Yeah, we're going to get um, even more faster sequencing technology in the future. We're probably looking at thousands of genes in one go and we will be looking at the whole genome. The whole genome means we will get information for the entire individual just in a few days and that's extremely powerful to allow allow us to decipher what's happening within this individual. The deciphered genome will not just reveal details about one disease, but gives information about multiple conditions and can help tailor the treatment to the patient's specific genetic makeup. Um, for example, some people may have resistance to certain drugs and that can all be explained by, by his or her DNA. So having had that information, we do not just cure one disease, but we can use that information to monitor this patient's health for his or her lifetime and um, to provide better management for the future. Well, I think you know, the future is endless. You know, with this new technology, um, I think it will keep um, progressing. The unravelling of the genome and all that entails raises ethical questions. For example, do you want to know how you might die? How would that knowledge affect your day-to-day -day life? Are we ready to see into our own futures? For example, you know, a risk for breast cancer or your risk for something that develops when you are an adult. Children, uh, parents make decisions for them. Okay? Do they need to grow up knowing that they have, uh, with a burden, of, they know that they have the risk of developing breast cancer in the future? So I think that's the reason why it's very important to establish that, you know, what we do not need to know, the information we do not need to know now can be left until when the child is older, where they can be involved in the whole consenting process and um, making their own decision to decide whether they want to know that information or not. So it can be seen that the work of a medical lab scientist today is more than blood tests, growing cultures and confirming diseases. The work is more challenging and diverse. The world that we live in now is very different to even it was in 10 years ago with the explosion of internet and the technology and smartphones. I mean, most of us can't imagine a day without a cell phone, a smartphone. Um, it's the same in every field, but more so in the genetics field because now we're in the era of a big data where we got the technology to extract as much genetic information from a person as we can. Uh, but we need the IT person, well, I think the terminology is bioinformatics, informaticians to be able to help the scientists to extract those data, to be able to answer the questions they're looking for. It's all about how you manage the data. It's all about how you um, extract the data that is meaningful and translate it clinically 
to uh, according to the patients, what the patients present with. Generating such overwhelming amounts of data requires careful management and quality control. New jobs are being created for technical specialists, but the next generation scientists who move into these exciting new areas can't forget their roots and are still applying the scientific method and their knowledge of laboratory science. Bioinformaticians are a specialised field. You have to have understanding of uh, biology and science, but you also have to have uh, skills of IT, software engineering and data mining. Um, so it is a very specialised and uh, it's definitely the growing field in the future. Another area undergoing a dramatically changing landscape is microbiology, where the battle to keep ahead of constantly evolving pathogens and drug-resistant superbugs is becoming the critical focus. Well, microbiology is the study of just about any sort of pathogen that infects humans. They can be viruses, bacteria, fungi, uh, and a range of parasites. So it's the study of those organisms and how we can uh, diagnose infections with those organisms in, in people. And we've got a whole range of tools to diagnose uh, those infections. Laboratory scientists test the cultures of a patient's pathogen to see which drugs have the ability to kill it, creating a more effective treatment path and reducing the possibility of infections developing drug resistance. Antibiotic resistance, sometimes referred to as superbugs when bugs are particularly resistant, uh, is an extremely important uh, issue and is going to be an increasingly important issue over the coming uh, years and decades. There's not much in the research and development pipeline um, and these bugs can develop resistance very, very quickly and they're becoming more prevalent throughout the world and they're spreading quite quickly. Because of this, we need to shift our focus a lot more to actually preventing infections in the first place, stopping them happening because our treatment options are becoming more limited and there are a whole range of different tools we have to do this. Lab Plus is a reference laboratory for New Zealand and the Pacific and has recently built a world-class PC3 laboratory to test and process highly contagious infections and superbugs by antibiotic resistant strains of tuberculosis. PC3 Lab is, is, is a laboratory that's uh, built to very, very um, exacting sort of specifications. It's airlocked, uh, it has certain uh, air changes and it uh, goes through special filters to prevent bacteria escaping into the air and that sort of thing. The PC3 lab allows us to confidently deal with tuberculosis and in particular what we call uh, extensively drug resistant tuberculosis which is kind of a, I guess, a type of superbug if you like. Um, that, that's becoming more common globally. Because it's such a dynamic field, it's an exciting field to be involved in. It's uh, dynamic particularly because the bugs are changing, but also because new technologies are, are coming through and uh, you constantly have to sort of uh, uh, relearn things and, and change the way you do things and adapt to these changes. But I think that, that can be a really positive and exciting thing. And, uh... Technological advances are occurring across Lab Plus. In the biochemical genetics section, newborn screening tests are being refined as scientists gain the ability to test and treat more genetic diseases. Biochemical genetics is really the, the, the chemical reactions that take part within the cell that break down protein, fatty acids from food and generate energy. So it's about generating energy from the cells and when we eat our protein, or metabolize our amino acids and proteins, or metabolize our fats that we eat, there is a series of reactions that take place to generate energy. And each of those reactions requires an enzyme. And in some children uh, and adults, those enzymes are not working properly because of genetic defect. And we can see those intermediate metabolites build up in the blood and the urine, and we can detect them when we do our testing here in the lab. A nationwide baby screening program exists where midwives perform a heel prick test to gather blood when the baby is two days old. The resulting card is mailed to Lab Plus where it's processed. Scientists perform a series of tests to screen rare but potentially devastating conditions. Some of the diseases, particularly the ones we've been screening for for a long time, have severe neurological outcomes. So um, severe developmental delay, and a lot of children ended up in institutions. These children now 
get treated early because we pick them up at, at two days of age. They get treated early uh, by the clinicians and the children can have the same outcomes as ordinary children and they can have the same aspirations and the same quality of life as everybody else. Um, well, the future with newborn screening uh, will depend on the technology that's available in the future. At the moment there's been an increase in genetic testing and we do look at other ways in which we can test our, um, for our current diseases by different technologies to improve our screening program. Um, and there are other diseases being added worldwide. And we keep a close eye on what's happening around the world and we talk to our colleagues in America and Europe constantly about screening tests and technologies as they develop. And I think the challenge for New Zealand is to develop junior scientists so that we can continue the work we've done already. And that's really what my hope for the future is, is that we can bring scientists forward to continue the work that we've done. Newborn screening is part of an ongoing drive to catch life-threatening conditions early. And as technology advances, new screening programs for other at-risk groups are becoming possible. The specialist chemical pathology section has been conducting a pilot scheme to screen for bowel cancer. And that screening is gradually being rolled out nationwide. The bowel screening pilot scheme um, was set up in 2010 um, between the Waitemata District Health Board ADHB Lab Plus and the Ministry of Health. So we can perform tests that differentiate between sort of an irritable bowel syndrome or actual cancer of the bowel. So it's really good to get that diagnosis because they're two very different diseases that should be treated differently. This is of huge benefit for public health. Um, the prognosis for patients with colorectal cancer is greatly improved if it's caught earlier on. The opportunities presented by this dynamic and changing environment are endless, but what are the skills that Lab Plus are looking for in young scientists wanting to join their team? Attention to detail is the important thing. Being able to work under stress because at times when um, the samples or the results are wanted quickly, there can be pressure on getting the analysis done. Um, a good understanding of IT is very important. Science, you need to understand science, you need to understand biology and chemistry. Have good English skills because you have to communicate to clinicians and to nurses. You need to understand what they want or the sort of analysis they need. And also you need to be able to think laterally as well. Think a little bit outside the square. Um, be able to troubleshoot. Those are the most important skills in my mind anyway.